week on Coyote News, the Nikki Fund 5K run was Saturday and we were there. You'll also find out which campus building is being added to the list for renovations. And USD receives even more funding from the NCAA. We'll tell you where those dollars are going. We also have news on football coach Joe Glenn and volleyball highlights. And we'll show you the popular new sport that's shooting through Vermilion. But first, headlines with Courtney Sterrett. 14 employees of the Borough of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives and the U.S. Justice Department face disciplinary action for their roles in the botched Fast and Furious Weapons Tracking Program. Fast and Furious has been blamed for contributing to crimes, including the murder of a U.S. border agent. Washington lawmakers voted to cite the U.S. Attorney General for contempt, but the investigation found no evidence that, Holder, that the Holder knew of Fast and Furious efforts, and he was cleared of all charges this afternoon. A former death row inmate and motivational speaker is now accused of murdering his wife. After being released from death row in 1986 for a mistrial involving rape and murder charges, Joseph Greenbrown made a living telling audience audiences how he was only hours from being executed on Florida's death row. Now Brown is back in jail, this time facing first-degree murder charges in the death of his wife. The South Dakota School of Mines and Technology president, Robert Wharton, died suddenly this morning. A neck cancer survivor, Wharton was cancer-free at the time of his death, but died of complications from cancer treatments earlier this year. The BOR has appointed Provost Dwayne Hernser as acting president. And those are your headlines. Thanks, Courtney. On Saturday, over 120 people attended this year's Nikki's Fun 5K run at Prentice Park. Coyote News' Brianna Clark was there. It's the 7th annual Nikki's Fund 5K Run Walk. As part of National Suicide Prevention Week, the event helps raise money and awareness for USD students in crisis situations. Well, Nikki's Fund was started because I lost my daughter to suicide in 2005. And I wanted a way to reach uh, young people. And I thought, well, the University of South Dakota would be a good place uh, to start that. This year's 5K Run Walk is in memory of Stacy Myers, a USD ADS major and Nikki's Fun volunteer who died in a car accident on June 16th. The front of the 2012 t-shirts will state 2012 Walk Run in memory of our special volunteer, Stacy Myers. The important thing to remember is that um, our brain is an organ, just like a heart, just like a kidney, just like our liver. It's an organ. And sometimes things happen to our organs. You know, it's easy to talk about when somebody is dealing with those medical diseases like cancer or kidney disease, but, but no one wants to talk about or be a part of suicide. Well, it's a real thing, and it happens in this community and in this state. 139 people died from suicide last year. That's too much. That's too many. So we're here to talk about it and support others who might be struggling. For Coyote News, I'm Brianna Clark. If you and your classmates have been debating which student organization to join, you might want to check out the brand new speech and debate team. Students can participate in 11 different speech activities. They break down into three areas, limited prep, interpretive, and prepared speeches. You can also participate in parliamentary style debate and use common knowledge to persuade the judges. The first tournament is scheduled for the first weekend in November at Bethany Lutheran College. Practices are held Tuesday nights from 6 to 9 in Beacom Hall, room 206. For more information, contact advisor Shane Semler of the Communication Studies Department. For the 22nd straight year, the University of South Dakota is ranked as one of the best national universities by U.S. News and World Report. USD President Jim Abbott gave the State of the University Address this afternoon. He says that this national recognition is really a tribute to the people and programs that make USD one of America's best universities for so many years in a row. USD was ranked on undergraduate programs, PhD programs, athletics, and campus activities. Coach Joe Glenn has a new radio show that includes interacting with fans to get them excited for Coyote Athletics. 
This year, the Coyote Report will broadcast live from a new bar in downtown Vermilion, the old lumber company. They wanted to have the coaches show in Vermilion at a place where people can come, watch the show, you know, maybe enjoy a beverage or two. Old Lumber Company wasn't open in time for the first show. Host Joe Van Gore says they plan to host the program there Monday night, where they'll be discussing the Northwestern game. And that's not all. A television show, Coyote Corner, is also in the works. Now, I went to um, our athletic director and associate athletic director, the Davids, Herb Stern Saylor, and I, I said, you know, we need some kind of a television show just to, just to promote our program and our university. and. Uh, with that, Midco uh, took the ball and ran with it. Glenn says fans will want to catch both the radio and TV shows to keep up with Coyote Athletics. There you're getting more exposure, you're um, creating more fans, more interest in your school and your team and your games, so I think it can do, can't do anything but help. The Coyote Report airs Monday nights on 106.3 FM. Coyote Corner airs at 7.30 on Tuesday nights on the Midco Sports Network. A Washingtonian organist performed at Slagle Hall last Friday night. Dr. Douglas Cleveland is the director of music and organist at Plymouth Church in Seattle. He's performed in several symphony orchestras and has played in 48 states. Many of his performances have been broadcast on National Public Radio, the BBC, and the radio program, The Organ Loft. He's now teaching courses in the sacred music at the University of Washington School of Music. Dr. Cleveland's next performance is October 21st in North Carolina at the Duke University Chapel. On this week's Coyote blog, Chris Jessen wonders whether or not you should care about this year's election. The end of the world is coming, or that's what will happen if you vote for the wrong candidate anyway. If you haven't turned on a television lately, you might not realize it's campaign season. That ritual torture we must suffer through every four years where our televisions and airways become filled with filth flung by all sides of the aisle. What was a campaign of hope and unity last time has become a crusade of misinformation, ridiculous hyperboles, and hyper-hypocrisy where if the other guy gets elected, America will be a wasteland by 2016, where instead of talking about the issues, it's centered on guffaws. It's no longer about talking about why you're better, it's about proving the other guy is worse. But the problem with choosing the lesser of two evils is, you're still choosing an evil. So if you make, want to make an informed decision this November, you're going to have to turn off the TV and actively seek out the truth about both candidates. In the end, it doesn't matter though. According to the internet, the world's going to end in December anyway. For Kyle Blog, I'm Chris Jessen. After a campus-wide forum to discuss the smoking ban, the Student Government Association has decided to take action. SGA President Alyssa Van Meteren says students in attendance supported an aggressive approach. Van Meteren says this means the SGA will present the executive board with an October 2nd deadline to either defeat or accept the smoking ban which passed through the SGA last fall. Van Meteren says SGA can only pass resolutions. They must then be approved and enforced by the executive board. The executive board is made up of President Abbott and the school's vice presidents. Vermilion has long been home to America's National Music Museum. The tourist attraction is located on USD's campus and is about to go a big change. For this week's Yo Report, Mandy Ewald explores plans for a new addition to this internationally known museum. The National Music Museum, located right here on USD's campus, has gained worldwide recognition for its musical instrument collection. Soon, however, the small vermilion treasure will sing to the tune of a $12 million expansion project. The short answer to why we're expanding is that we've simply outgrown this facility. We have about 15,000 total instruments, only about eight or 900 are on display in the museum at any time. Current plans will expand the museum to four times its present size, adding approximately 65,000 square feet. The museum plans to grow into the South Dakota Union building and be connected by a new structure. The expansion will cost around $12 million and about 10 years to complete. Munster doesn't expect the construction to start for at least three years. No other college or university in the world 
as anything like this. There are other collections on other campuses, but nothing that approach this one. Munster says the museum would like to offer a PhD in the study of instruments in the future, which would make USD the second institution in the world to offer such a program. For the Yolt Report, I'm Mandy Ewald. Thanks, Mandy. You can view expansion plans for the National Music Museum on its website. Construction of a new paintball field began this summer at the Ufford Hills event grounds. Coyote News spoke to Taylor Hamblin about the new field and activity. Uh, Alex Ufford, he's uh, the owner of Ufford Hills Paintball. Kind of called me sometime last school year, asked me if I would like to help out, and I said yes. So I've been out here ever since, just building fields, contact people, trying to give a million paintball field. Hey Gabe, well, mind where you're walking. He had the energy and supplies to construct even more fields. Everything was donated actually by um, or by companies in Vermilion. Tire field's a little bit larger, has a lot of different types of bunkers. The log field's much smaller, um, but has very large bunkers, so like large people can play in them too, like adults, kids. Um, both are very different. Really fun out here. Um, Ufford Hills is open Saturdays and Sundays from noon to 8 p.m. or dusk. And we are actually open Monday through Friday by reservations. So if any of the university groups would like to reserve the field for um, team building or just come out and have a fun day, they're more than welcome to. If you're interested in joining the paintball team, contact Joe Pileschi at paintball at usd.edu. Live correspondent Angelica Brackens joins us to talk about what Post Secret is, why it's being displayed at the library, and how people can join the Post. Her guest, Danielle Loftus, is part of the Art and Exhibits Committee. She has details about Post Secret and the library's other upcoming events. Thanks, guys. Today, I'm here with Danielle Loftus to talk about the Post Secret exhibit at the library. Danielle, can you tell us, like, if people don't know what Post Secret is, can you tell us what that is? Yes. Um, well, to start off with, at the library, we have an Arts and Exhibits Committee, so we were trying to think of um, things that we could show and we wanted to do something fun so we looked around to see what different people are doing and then we looked to see um, that lots of people are doing post secret so we uh, started off with um, getting an invitation we ha were having Frank Warren come here in November um, he's the originator of the post secret and you asked what that is um, it, it started off as a place where s people can send in their postcards and in the mail and then they get posted online and it's basically um, what it is it's a secret so it could be anything and the concept behind that is, is to give people a chance to um, you know say what's on their mind something that maybe might be upsetting or interesting or just anything and um, it's kind of a therapeutic thing so going back to the libraries what we decided to do is um, put up our own exhibit for the whole semester and allow anybody on campus to <laughs> submit their secrets and we are showing those secrets on the second floor in the library Okay, and how long is this exhibit going to be? Um, it's going on now, and it will be up until the end of the semester in December. Okay, and then who is who is Frank Warren? Frank Warren, like I said, he's the founder of Post Secret. Um, it's um, I'm, I think he's in commercial um, design or something like that, an artist. But um, he, you know, he's nationally known right now, and he's somebody that goes around all over the world and does these events. All right, and thanks again for Danielle for joining us. And the Post Secret exhibit is displayed throughout this fall on the second floor of the library. Live from the Muck, I'm Angelica Brackens. Thanks, Angelica. Today on Coyote Sports, USD is raking in the big bucks since its transition to Division I. Two Coyotes are receiving conference honors, and commentator Taylor Moore delves into an NFL player's troubles. But first, sports headlines. Courtney? Thanks, Abby. After being convicted of 45 counts of sexual abuse in June, Jerry Sandusky's sentencing date finally has been set. Before the sen sentencing, October 9th, a hearing's been scheduled to determine if Sandusky should be classified as a sexually violent predator. The 68-year-old is expected to be sentenced to prison for the rest of his life. Major League Baseball has opened an investigation into the antics of the Toronto Blue Jays shortstop, Yunel Escobar, was spotted this weekend wearing eye black strips with a homophobic slur written on them. 
He says it was a joke. The Blue Jays are suspending Escobar for three games. And those are your sports headlines. Thanks, Courtney. The athletic department is bringing in $3.5 million each year since USD began its transition to Division I in 2006. That increase means an added $1.5 million in athletic scholarships and another $1.5 million in coaching salaries. Over that same time, the university has nearly doubled its contribution to the department from 2.4 to 4.5 million. Outside donations also doubled in the past five years from 475,000 in 2006 to almost 1 million last year. Athletic Director David Saylor says the transition is the main instigator for the increases, as well as a renewed passion for USD athletics. And knowing that we finally have a sense of permanence in, in who we're playing and establishing rivalries once again that haven't been here in a long time and getting those teams to come into the dome just yeah, adds to the fire. Saylor says that over $1 million in student fees went towards facility maintenance last year. A coyote received conference honors this week after a dominating start to the Summit League schedule. Volleyball outside hitter Kendall Crittenbrink had more than 40 kills over the weekend against Western Illinois and IUPUI. Crittenbrink also had six blocks last week and ranks first in the conference in points per set. The women's cross country team received a top 20 ranking in the Midwest region poll this week. That after finishing second at the Woody Greeno Invitational last weekend. The team is 15 in the 15th in the polls released by U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. The Coyotes also won the Creighton Omaha Classic earlier this season. The football team might be on the road this weekend, but that's not an ex excuse for fans not to attend the game. The Student Government Association is sponsoring a bus to Chicago to watch the Coyotes take on North Northwestern on Saturday. They sold over 100 spots for students. For one low price, the fee includes travel, a two-night hotel stay, and a game ticket. Just because you're not a varsity student athlete doesn't mean you can't play sports in college. Kayette News' Cassie Bartlett is live at the Muck with more info on how students can participate in intramurals. Cassie? Thanks, Abby. I'm here with Samantha Lowry, who coordinates all the intramural activities at the Wellness Center. Samantha, how has turnout been this year? It's been pretty well. We're starting to use IamLeagues.com, which is an online service that lets students sign up for free, and it kind of helps me figure out who's coming to what games and how many participants I have for each sport. Do you have any new sports that you're offering this fall? Uh, yes, we're doing our standards, um, like football, basketball, volleyball, and soccer, but we're going to be adding paintball, so hopefully that will have a great turnout. Are you using the new paintball field that was just spoken about earlier in the newscast. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been working with Taylor and Alex at Ufford facility to make sure we have a tournament set. So it's October 13th and 14th okay. um, and it should be a lot of fun. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Samantha. If you're interested in learning any more about intramurals, you can check out the Wellness Center website. For Coyote News Live, I'm Cassie Bartlett. It's Cassie. On this week's More Sports, commentator Taylor Moore goes head-to-head -head with an NFL player. Chad Johnson, a former NFL wide receiver, has been in trouble with the law lately. Known for his talent on the field and his comedy off the field, Johnson is often in the media spotlight. But now he's caught some attention that's left him without a football career. Johnson was married to reality star Evelyn Lozada, who appeared on VH1's Basketball Wives. The two met on Twitter, and it was all love after that. In the public eye, the relationship appeared to be Pretty good, but I guess there was more going on behind closed doors. Johnson was recently slapped with a domestic battery charge. This all happened because the two were arguing over a receipt for condoms and Johnson reportedly headbutted his then wife Evelyn in the head. If convicted, Johnson faces up to one year in jail. My advice for the former couple is to keep one's hands to themselves and don't look for love on Twitter. For more sports, I'm Taylor Moore. Thanks, Taylor. And that's all for Coyote Sports.
In this week's commentary, Chrissy Sorensen goes through the rigorous training to become a bike cop. Coyote Commentary presents Bike Cop Training. Step one, cardio. Step two, high speed pursuits. Step three, animal control. Step four, surveillance. Hey, you're not going into that party in there, are you? Are you? Yep. Yeah. Step five, subduing suspects. Step six, tackling suspects. Oh, um, get done. You, you have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Yeah. You know what? I'll let you off with a warning this time. You hear me? For Kyle Commentary, I'm Christy Sorensen. Chrissy says no squirrels were harmed in the making of this week's commentary. After receiving a large percentage of votes in last spring's SGA poll, the restaurant chain Chick-fil-A is coming to the University of South Dakota. But now some students are having second thoughts after its CEO took a public stance on gay marriage. On this week's Out and About, we asked students their thoughts about Chick-fil-A coming to campus. I actually don't support Chick-fil-A coming to campus and that I don't think that we should support bigotry against certain types of people. I think it's great to have different options other than Aramark because I know a lot of people at the university don't like it. I really honestly don't care. I mean, it doesn't make a difference. It's Chick-fil-A. It's not Aramark. My thoughts on Chick-fil-A coming to campus is I already can get boring chicken sandwiches from like six other restaurants in town. We do not need it. I'm actually pretty excited about it. I really like Chick-fil-A and their food is very good. To me it really doesn't matter. Them supporting, I guess, anti-gay rights movement um, would make me hesitant to purchase Chick-fil-A, but I know that we already have a contract with them, so I don't know how much, I guess, it would cost to break the contract with Chick-fil-A that we already have. I believe it'll definitely draw in more money for the university. Uh, I think the students would really, really enjoy it. Oh my god, I love Chick-fil-A, so it's like heaven is coming on campus. It's food people. Deal with it! A new issue of the Volant hit newsstands today. Pick up your issue to read about Greek numbers on the rise and board requests more funds for students. Those stories and more can be found on volantonline.com. You can also check out the Coyote News link on the page. That's all for Coyote News. Don't forget to check us on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great night and a good weekend. We'll see you next time.